So here we are in our test repo. We're going to do a few more complicated operations here. So we have one branch, and we can see you know, all branches, ours, active, stale, things that haven't been used. Let's go back here to our test repo. So for instance, if we click on our test file, or we want to upload a, a file rather, let's, let's go ahead and upload a file. So we can choose our own file to upload here. You can either just drag and drop, you can click the choose and, uh, and fill it in with a commit change, short and long description. So we'll just go ahead and choose a file. Let's take, uh, here we go, uh, logcat. That's a pretty easy one to, to work with there. So let's go ahead and open that up. Here it is, it's uploading the file. And we have the uh, option to name this. Let's see, we added a logcat file. So this is really handy if you want to add files to your repository by working through the web interface. Uh, we're going to look at different ways to do this, of course, but this is just how we do this through the uh, web interface. So you can either do this directly or you can create a new branch um, based on what we've, what we've changed. Let's call this uh, Alaska Linux user patch one. Okay, easy enough. And it noticed it all automatically filled that in for me. Um, you could change it to something else like A. Okay, let's go ahead and submit that processing our files. Um, and then it's asking, <clears throat> excuse me, about opening a pull request because when you when you create a new branch, the idea is the master branch should always be the most current up-to-date information. So you can create a pull request saying, hey, I've, I've made this change and I want to merge this to the main branch. I want this pull request to become part of the main branch. So in the master branch, you can see the file does not exist, but in the patch A branch, you can see the file does exist. And if the pull request is a way that you say, hey, I've made a change to the material and I want to see that material get moved to the master branch. I want to get this integrated with the main system file. So you can click on your pull request. You can see <clears throat> what's the suggested uh, change. And you can make comments, ask some questions, like, okay, seems like a good idea. Uh, you can comment that. Uh, you can ask the user who made the pull request, for instance, if it was not you. You can ask them to uh, why, they're, why they want to propose this change. Uh, you can do all sorts of things like request reviewers. We're not set up for that here. You actually have to set that up beforehand so you know it's like it doesn't allow one. However, you can assign people like yourself. There we go. Click on that. And poof, there I'm assigned to this pull request. I need to work on it. Um, notice that reviewers still doesn't show up. So that's, reviewers is something you have to set up. You have to be part of like an organization. Uh, you can give things labels. Like, hey, this is an enhancement, or maybe it's a bug or a duplicate. Um, you just click on which label you want, go ahead and X out, and then it will fill it in, and poof, there it shows up. You just now added the enhancement label. Uh, projects and milestones, you can, you can make some milestones, for instance, to say, hey, when this gets fixed, then we'll make a release. <coughs> you uh, can see if people are watching this, notice that it, Sign me up to watch this because I have made a change in a pull request. I can unsubscribe from that so I don't get email notifications or uh, profile notifications to tell me uh, that there's been a change. You can lock conversations. You can close pull requests. This has no conflicts. Great tool here that it just checks things for you. <clears throat> you can do it here on the website. You can view the command line instructions. It's really up to you how you want to do this. Uh, if you don't like the idea, you can close the pull request to say no thanks. Um, or you can just click the merge button. Different options, um, a little bit beyond the scope of, of the video here. 
but uh, essentially just how you want to merge that into your file. So we're going to go ahead and merge it. And like, what do you want to call it? Yep, we'll go ahead and call it that and we'll confirm the merge. And now we've merged that request. So if we wanted, we could have just deleted that extra branch right there by clicking delete. So here we see we have the master patch A and master branches that look identical because we've merged them together. We still have two branches. Uh, nobody supports this branch, but we can see in here the different branches as they go back and forth. We can look at the commits on there by clicking on anything. Um, we can see where it was merged back together. So here in our test repo, let's go ahead to the patch branch. And let's do some changes. So here we've got our file. We're gonna we're gonna make a few changes. We're like, hey, we added a, a log cat file. We should we should write that down for them. We'll just go ahead and commit that change. Poof. And then what I want you to see here is that the master branch shows the commit that we had, but it does not have what we just changed, which was the test file. And this is one commit ahead and one commit behind the master. So you can uh, compare things. And here in the comparison, we can see the addition that we made to the patch branch. So pretty handy tools that you can use on the, uh, the GUI, the web interface here. <clears throat> uh, that fork tool is really handy. So now we can see kind of like a graphical layout of what's going on. So we can see that this is actually moved on and moving ahead of the master branch. So again, here's our test file. It does not have the changes in it. But we can also uh, make other changes. So here, we're going to edit this in the master branch. We'll just go ahead and just delete this first part right here. And if we make this change in the master branch, it's not going to show up in the patch branch because these branches are separate. And that's something I really want you to see here. Um, we could have, we could name this, of course, whatever we want. We can make a new branch out of it. We can just commit it just like it is. Let's go ahead and just commit that. So here in our test repo, we see the master branch has the updated log cat. Right, and now the master branch has gone ahead of the patch branch. So these these graphics kind of help to show you where the different branches are at and what has changed in them, and that these branches are distinct and separate. So you know we do a comparison um, from the master to the patch. It says it's able to merge. Everything is always looking for a reference in reference to the master, like we want to merge this change to the master branch. Uh, it's really handy having extra branches. You can keep files in there um, that maybe as you work on something new, a new idea that maybe doesn't fully work yet or something you're testing out, you can do a separate branch to work on that. Um, let's see, it wants us to add a README. Uh, README is written in a markdown script. Uh, there's uh, a lot of tutorials about how to use that. Um, but essentially what we want to look at, README is a great place to put what your repository is about. So that way, like as, a, as I'm writing here, as soon as people go to to GitHub, they can uh, now see what it is about what the repository is for. So there we go. As soon as they get to the test repo page, there we go. We can see 
that it has a readme. Now we made this readme in the patch branch, but we want to merge this to the master branch. So we'll click on the pull request here. We're going to call it patch B. We're going to just say that we just added a, added a readme. There we go. And we create our pull request. So we are trying to hook that back to the main branch. So notice it has both in there, the updated test file and the creating the readme. So we could just click the merge pull request. Uh, we could comment on it, we could close it, we could assign ourselves, put some labels on it. A lot of, a lot of interesting things we can do here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and merge it. So there we go, it's been successfully merged and closed. So now we could delete that branch if we want. We can go back to our repo. Uh, now the master and the patch branch both match. So here we go. We take a look and both of them are identical. So let's take a look here. Notice that all the files are the same. So we have test file for the pat and for the master branch, both identical because we merged them and they should be. Uh, we can look at our log cat. Let's look at our log cat in the master and patch branch. And what do we see here? They're not identical. That's because we merged from the patch branch to the master, but the master is where we change the log cat file. So it's pretty uh, important to keep in mind as you look at the different um, branches. So the commits, we have more commits in the master because each merge pull request counts as a commit. And then we also did uh, one extra commit there. Uh, issues, again, this is a place where we can put an issue like we can click new issue here. We can look at open issues. Let's make a new issue to say um, something about this. This uh, repo serves no purpose. Okay, so this is our issue. And it really can be as mundane as you want to see. It can be very uh, informative. It can be about a bug. It can be really just about anything you want. Um, I, I really uh, don't recommend trolling uh, by way of issue, that's that's not a very handy way to use this. But for the purposes of this test repo, it, it really um, has no purpose. So we're just making an issue just so we can look at making an issue. So here we have an issue. Uh, you, somebody's made an issue against your stuff. You can add a label for it. Say, okay, well, this is a good first issue for somebody to work on. Okay, let's add some more files to this. Um, set some milestones, like let's fix something. We signed ourselves to it. Um, and we make a comment. Okay, yeah, I'll work on it. Let's, let's uh, add that comment. So there's our comment. Let's go back to our issues and take a look. Good for situ. There's one comment. So just at a glance, you can see some information. You can click on that and see what the issue is in more detail. See if there's something you can or want to do about that. So pretty, pretty handy way. Let's go ahead and create a new file. And we'll just call this uh, another file. Because we're trying to fix this issue, right? The issue is we don't uh, we don't have enough stuff. So another file to fix the issue of not having enough stuff in our repo. That was the complaint on the issue is we didn't have enough files. So we're just going to fix issue number one with that. So we commit this new file. We look at our commits. We created another file, and we're going to um, take a look at this. Here. All right, so here's that commit number. We're going to copy that. We're going to go to our issue. I'm going to show you a neat little trick here. So we're going to say we fix this with commit 
and then you paste that in there. And now if you close and comment, it'll actually put that fix with commit and you can click right on it so they can see, hey, we fixed it and this is how we fixed it. There we go, now our issue has been closed. Go back to our issue, there's no open issues. Of course, we do have the one closed issue here. We can go back and look at any closed issues. See the comments, see what happens. Go back to open issues, see if there's any issues in there. Uh, you probably won't be using this a lot because you uh, end up working on a lot of Android things by yourself but uh, you can go through and look at your settings here. Um, we can actually just delete this repository. We don't need it because it is kind of a test repository, but we're going to hang on to it and do a few, few more things with it. So let's take a look at some more things.